What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another week of Talk Live Two. There's a tag. You already know how I give it up. You already know what it's gonna be tonight. You already know I got another special guest tuned in with me on my couch in my world, and it's gonna be nothing but lit. So y'all sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, cause you already know what it is. It's Talk Live Two. There's a tag. Boom. Okay, y'all. So tonight we have none other than upcoming LGBT rapper. College graduate, freshly just dropped a brand new album. Nobody, none other than, you know, I heard it, I had his music playing when I came out. Mr. QB the Don. Hey. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Got me. Bow. 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 Bow that ass. I played a lot of period. So tonight, of course, like I said, we have none other than QB the Don. You laughing at Kiki and I already. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So how are you? Like, what's been going on with you in your life? You know, I'm just chilling, living, doing what I can do, doing my best. You know what I'm saying? Just making it. As you should, making it. So tonight I got you on my show because of a few reasons. One, you know, you're an upcoming rapper. Mm -hmm. Two, you just dropped a mixtape mm -hmm. and three you know you just graduated college boom and so i'm um, just i want to really get into you tonight right so we're going to get into you i have my first icebreaker question okay. which is for you so the icebreaker question is just something that gets you thinking just to get you something you know get you talking so the question is what are three things you feel like a rapper should have number one skill mm -hmm. um number two um, I feel like a rapper should have intelligence. I feel like you gotta be smart to be a rapper. You yeah. can't you can't be on that dumb shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can cuss? You can cuss. Oh, okay. <laughs> um and number three, I just feel like just personality, just being yourself. So yeah, right. those are my top three. So and those are your top three. Now, what about a flow? When they're writing music. I mean, I feel like that that that's a part of skill. Like it goes into the gotcha. skill, like the skill is the flow. Like you gotta have a flow when you rap. It's it's a skill. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna dig into like your personal life first mm -hmm. and then we're gonna get into your music. Whew. So first I just wanna, you know, get into you. So of course, you know, I know you're from Jacksonville, mm -hmm. the 904 Duval County, Florida. Um he's a Floridian like me. The Bango. Um, so how was it growing up in Jacksonville? Like what was your life like? Um, poverty. I'm just saying, no life. <laughs> I mean, I did grow up in the hood, but it wasn't like I didn't really hurt for anything. Like anything I wanted, I could get. But it wasn't like I grew up like you know in the best of you know everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I went to you know pretty good schools. I went to you know advanced schools. You know what I'm saying? Like college prep schools and so stuff like smart. that. Very much smart. You know, intelligent. Like I said, intelligent. You know okay. what I'm saying? Um, so like <laughs> my life, my life was it wasn't hard, but it wasn't you know the best of things either. You know what I'm saying? But right. it, it was a life. You know, you do what you can do. So you feel, how do you feel like, you know, growing mm -hmm. up in the hood shaped you into the person you are now? Um, I feel like, all my, okay, so growing up, <laughs> child, so it's just like, me, I don't know, I really don't know, it's just, the hood just, you what just, did, you what just, did it bring out of you? You just, you just, you have your own little twang, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. like, people know not to, people know not to, I'm trying not to cuss. People know not to fuck with you, but you know, like if, if it's time yeah, to get there, if it's time to get there, we could get yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? But I know how to keep it cute, keep it classy. You know what I'm right. saying? Like it's yeah. So I know you have a sister. Mm -hmm. You know how was that bond? Like how was it growing up having a sister? Because you know I'm the only child. So. Yeah, I love my sister. That's like my other half. Like she's literally the opposite of me. Like me and my sister, we actually have like matching tattoos. I have a sun. She has a moon. Like I'm really the fire. Like she's the calm side. That's that's my other half. I love my sister. That's good. That's what's up. So you know. On top of coming from the hood and all of that thing, all of those things, you just recently graduated from college, mm -hmm. and you know that's a big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And you graduated from the greatest HBCU in the nation, FAMU. So you know, Rattler Gang. So, how was that experience for you? Um, FAMU really shaped me, honestly. Like I would honestly say, I came into myself at that school. I really found myself. I honestly don't know how to describe it. I would just say, like you know, I just came to myself like I really evolved as a person you know what I'm saying that's that's just that fam you just made me me major you yeah so I know also from me knowing you that you're a first time you know college student like you're a first fam you're a first generation college student mm -hmm. how was that for you like being a first generation college student being the first person to graduate out of your household like how was that that's honestly major like that's a really big thing that's something I really like push myself to do because honestly people 
I was honestly told like in high school, like I would never go to college. I would never go because I was a fighter. I fought a lot in high school. Mm -hmm. So it was just like they told me with your attitude, with your mouth, you ain't gonna never, you ain't gonna never make it. You ain't gonna never graduate. You ain't gonna never be this. You ain't gonna never be that. So to, that was a really big thing for me to actually go to college, graduate college and like, you know, do that. I had to prove a lot of bitches wrong. Shout out to you, Miss Guidance Counselor Girl. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that with you finishing and, you know, finishing school and actually graduating, I feel like that brings, you know, a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? That brings a lot of dedication to you. Mm -hmm. And so, and you know, with you doing music, you're doing things like that, you have to be dedicated right. to, to your thing. So I feel like that's, that's going to grow. Exactly. Gonna grow because you, you know, you're dedicated. So being a young LGBTQ rapper, which we'll get into soon, you know, how is your relationship like with your parents? Like, cause I know you're out there. I know they see what you do. You know, how is your relationship with them? Like, how did, you know, how do they take what you do? Um, my, okay, so with my mom and my dad, it's kind of different. It's different dynamics. My dad, he's really like fun loving. He's cool with it. Like my dad, he, okay, so growing up, like with my dad, he never liked gay people. Like mm -hmm. that was the thing that like, he always like make smart comments and stuff like that. And my gay ass just sitting there like, let me keep quiet. Cause you know, this man is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, right. so it's just like with my dad, it's a different dynamic. So, but when I did come out to him, he got like, you know, comfortable. He's okay with me. Like we can joke, we can play, we can kiki. You know what right. I'm saying? With my mom, it's a little bit different. Like right. it's, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't like to really go there with her, but I mean, we still cool. We working on my relationship. It's like, it's a growing thing, but like my relationship with my parents, it's, it's honestly good. That's good. That's what's up. And I like to hear that at least you're growing and you're getting some type of, you know, agreement there because yeah. I feel like it's important to have that kind of relationship with your parents, especially being LGBT. You right. To, you know, it's because I mean, I feel like, you know, parents don't necessarily want their children to be gay, but it's something that you can't really control. You know what I'm saying? I am who I am. And it, I'm the type of person where it's like, you either gonna fuck with me or you're not. Parents, family, friends, it is what Honestly. it is. Like, you gonna fuck with me or you're not. And it is what it is. I'm gonna be mean, period. I can't say that, but you heard that. You said <laughs> you gonna mess with me or you're not, regardless of, regardless of anything. So, you know, last question about, you know, your life. I just want to know what motivated you to go to school. Like, because you're not having anybody that did that prior to mm -hmm. what what even what was the what, what even made you think hey i want to go to school and i want to do something i want to do something that nobody else had um i pretty much so growing up it kind of was like I, I won't say it was instilled but it kind of was instilled that you have to you know you know, they say that you have to, you know, go to school to, you know, get these good jobs to get right. all this money and stuff. I live a pretty like, I live a comfortable life now. Right. So saying I wanted to keep up with that lifestyle. So I wanted to be able to go to college and, you know, be able to have like, I'm not, not necessarily a fallback plan, but a, a plan for my life. You know what right. I'm saying? Like if I wasn't rapping, I would be doing, you know, what I'm doing now. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I always wanted to, you know, live comfortably. So that's, right. that's honestly what pushed me. If you school. wasn't rapping, you'd be trapping. If you wasn't trapping, you'd be getting. And that's for my mama. Period. <laughs> so of course, the reason we brought you here today is really to talk about your music because mm -hmm. you're an artist mm -hmm. and you just dropped like one of the biggest projects 16 motherfucking songs for you and that's on my mama because you dropped a prior project in, during quarantine which mm -hmm. you called quarantine mm -hmm. and you had about what four or five songs on there yeah and then you dropped another mixtape called netherland mm -hmm. which you had about four songs on there as well yeah. and now you have a 16 you know, song project that you just dropped. I mean, the girl's so, not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Not like, like, the girl's not. Like, honestly. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Honestly, I really don't. Doing it. So doing what it. made you start rapping? Um, honestly, I've always been writing music. Like when I was in middle school, Okay, so Nicki Minaj is honestly my biggest inspiration. Mm -hmm. So Pink Friday dropped and bitch, I was in middle school, like just getting my life, you know what I'm saying? So I've always been writing music, but I was always scared to, I guess, do it myself. You know what I'm saying? Or get in front of a camera or go into a studio and just start rapping. So it was just like, when I was in college, I was like, uh, fuck it, like it ain't, it's nothing else to do with everybody. You know, everybody, I was watching other people, you know, be entrepreneurs, like going out chasing their dreams. So I'm like, bitch, I honestly, I want to rap. So let's right. start rapping. So that's honestly what pushed me to rap. Like I've always been doing it, but right. I've never stepped in front of a camera. Anymore. So how long have you, would you say you've been writing? Since since middle school. So sixth grade. Yeah. It's, and bitch, I just graduated college. So that's a while. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, but I'm glad you skill. actually. Skill. Skill. Which, honestly, I'm glad you actually put yourself skill. out there to do so mm -hmm. at this point. So. How is it being a rapper in the LGBTQ community knowing that we have so many LGBTQ rappers surfacing now? Like, mm -hmm. how is that for you? Um, I feel like, once I don't necessarily focus on what, you know, other people have going on. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, you just stay in your own lane, you drive your own lane, and you, you run your own race, you know what I'm saying? For me, <laughs> for me, it's just like, for me, it's just like, 
I, I'm focusing on me. I'm doing me. I will say it's, I, it's hard for LGBTQ rappers. Like, it's hard for us. I would say it's a lot harder than, you know, straight men or whatever. Right. But, I mean, we killing it. Like, we, 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 we rap better than a lot of these straight niggas out here. Like, so, what do you feel makes you different from the LGBTQ rappers that are now? Um, no shade. But I feel like, to me, to me, this is, this, this, this is my opinion. This I feel like they put it all out on the table a lot of LG, a lot of LGBTQ rappers give very much city girl. You know what I'm saying? I feel like everybody want to scam, everybody want a credit card fraud. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I don't really, I don't really give those vibes. I'm very much trapper. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like very much, I'm a trap rapper. That's that's how I feel about myself. I think, that, I think that's what sets me apart from everybody else. You know, I'm not really, I'm not. I can do that. I can give those vibes. Like it's, it's never no tea. Like, I can go there if I need to go there. Right. But I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a trapper. You know what I'm saying? You're a trapper rapper. And that's all I want. Okay. So what is your like writing content? Like, what do you do to write a song? Child, give me a bottle of Hennessy. Give me a nasty little blunt. Child, I need a fat one, honey. <laughs> and bruh, that's all I need is a bottle of Hennessy and a blunt. Oh, my mama give me a nice little beat. So it's up and stuck. It's up and stuck. So how long does it take you for you to write a song? And because you write these songs yourself, right? Yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> Child. <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take you to write a song? Um... It honestly depends. Like if I if I'm feeling the beat, if I'm feeling the beat, it takes me no longer than an hour. Like honestly, I like Neverland. I literally did Neverland in four days. Like that EP, I did that whole EP in four days. Four okay. songs, four days. So and, I, and that's like recording, writing, like all of that, like editing, four days. All of that took four days. So I literally wrote those songs probably within an hour. Like if I'm feeling the beat, if I'm really into the vibes, like it don't take me long at all. Like I can just get into my beats. It's nothing. So. What the, like what kind of vibe do you have to be in to like for it to come out of you? Like, cause I I try to understand everybody's creativity levels. Mm -hmm. Like I have friends, of course, that's a makeup artist. I would sit and watch her do makeup mm -hmm. just to see like what she's doing. Like mm -hmm. I have friends that do videos. Yeah. I want to sit back and watch how they create you know videos. Right. So like, what's the vibe you have to be in to create a song? I would say. Let me think. Okay, so like when I do, when I when I want to write, when I like I said, Nicki Minaj is my biggest inf inspiration. So when I try to draw inspiration, I really go back to her mixtapes, like "Beam Me Up, Scotty." Like I don't know if that like kind of sets the tone. Like that's mm -hmm. the vibe for me. Like "Beam Me Up, Scotty." Like her bars on there is undeniable. Like it's untouchable. So it's just like when I want to get into like my my beats. Like if I really want to get into it, I'm going to "Beam Me Up, Scotty." Like that's just gonna set that's gonna set the mood for me. Right. I'm trying not to freak out because he's a blonde. I'm a blonde period, of course, but I'm trying to keep it real cute. But um, so. Of course, you say Nicki Minaj is your inspiration, your mm -hmm. biggest inspiration. Like, who's another inspiration you have? Like, give me um, two. For these days, I would definitely say Mulatto, Big Lotto. You know what I'm saying? Big Lotto, Big Back Ends. Yeah, bitch, I'm bull died. Don't play, bitch. Okay? <laughs> Don't play the Lotto. Um, and definitely Megan. Like, Megan, I think her flow is definitely undeniable. Like, I definitely go to her for, like, you know, flows. Right. Like, if I really want to get into, like, flows, I go to Megan. So, outside of women, who's your favorite male rapper? Like, who would be your Ooh. inspiration? I'm on with the shits. Um, I would say male. That's kind of hard. I don't really get into a lot of male rappers, but I will say, I don't want to sound too like basic, but I would say like the Drakes, the Lil Wayne. But like, I'm really into that. The the Young Money, like Young right. Money, is my go-to. Like honestly, I honestly like Tiger too. Like right. Young Money, like that's that's just my go-to. Tiger's not Young Money anymore. But okay. Oh. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you know. You recently dropped the Darn Ball You Want, mm -hmm. right? Am I correct? Yes. So how long have you been cooking that up? Like how long did it take you to actually finish that project? 16 songs. Okay, so the real tea on that is, I would say the Darn Ball You Want has literally been cooking up since quarantine. Mm -hmm. So the people really been asking for the album for the longest. Right. Like the people really been like asking for the asshole, like drop the album, drop the album. And I was like, you know, I don't think it's time. I don't think I'm ready. I really had like, I wanted to give them a full, full album. I didn't want to do like, 10 songs, 11 songs. Like I said, it's 16 motherfucking songs. Right. Like, bitches ain't doing that. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's really been cooking up since quarantine's days. Like the first probably seven songs would have been on quarantines. Like if I didn't want to make that an EP, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, I've been writing a lot of those songs for a minute. Like Shake That, honestly, Shake That Shit and What's So While I Flow, they came out around the, they came out actually before quarantine. Yeah, they quarantine. came out before, yeah. So like, I've been cooking this up for a minute. Like it's been a minute. So you had songs mm -hmm. prior to, yeah. you put out two EPs prior to, mm -hmm. then put out a mixtape. Girl, wow. working. In school. Working. Wow. In school. Okay. 
Get so it. you have a few bangers out. Mm -hmm. You know, Hottest in Summer, which I came out to tonight, being my personal favorite song. Mm -hmm. What inspired Hottest in Summer for you, like to do that song? Um, I want. I honestly, Megan Thee Stallion. Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. I, when I when I got that beat, I was listening to. I want to say. It was Sugar. It was I, I can't think of what the song it was off of Sugar, but it was one of her songs on Sugar. And it was just like she just Megan just has like when you listen to Megan, you just bop. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just yeah. little, it's just a little bop. So how hot is this song? It just gave me like, bitch, I need to bop. Yeah. I need to bop. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I need to bop my head. So right. that's that's what that was the inspiration behind that. That's what yeah. Megan. Okay. So like I said, you have a few. Mm -hmm. The fingers out there. A few. A few. Really, the whole the whole album is really good. Like mm -hmm. no lie. Um. So these songs are fan faves. You know, if you're rapping, mm -hmm. admit it featuring the hair position, which was our first guest. Yeah. I mean. Um. Hotter than summer, and then let's get it featuring K Scar. Mm -hmm. Out of all of those songs, which one would you say was your fave? Okay. Wait. Name them again. So you have, if you're rapping, mm -hmm. admit it. Hotter than summer, mm -hmm. and let's get it. If you're rapping. If you're rapping. I was in my. Bag on if you rap it, and that's what my that motherfucking was, That was a good intro. You like, know, I listen to Nikki's album just really, and I can go back to each intro to every song mm -hmm. because every intro she has is like memorable. So I think right. she wants to not not listen to everything on there because her intros are amazing. Right. So that made me want to listen to your whole EP just to see what I had coming. Just you know what I'm saying? Left because the first song was amazing. Right. So like for me, I feel like with the intro, I feel like I had to snap. Like you know what I'm saying? I had to really. Cause I feel like, like you said, with quarantines and Neverland, there was those was like EPs. I wanted y'all to see what I was giving, you know what I'm saying? Like get into the vibes, see what I can do. But like with this tape, with if you rapping, I wanted to really like snap. Like I want to show y'all, bitch, ho, I got flow, ho, I got bars. It is what it is. It's never no. So you know what I'm saying? Like I really want to get into my. Like, that. So I'm gonna say this. Some people don't like to say this, but I'm gonna say it. So Santana, who is the queen, mm -hmm. king, queen, whatever you wanna call him of the LGBT community rap, rapping right now. Mm -hmm. And that's just no lie. Mm -hmm. He followed you on Instagram. Mm -hmm. He followed you recently. Mm -hmm. And you know, cause I've been everybody like follows, comments, everything, especially everybody that I'm interviewing. Mm -hmm. So, um, how does that make you feel? Like to have Santana like follow you on social media, knowing that he's like the biggest LGBT star out right now? Um, I mean, I, obviously I feel good about it, but me and Santana, we were, I knew Santana before the, like, before he got big, like, with all of that. So, like, it's, it's, it's cool a lot. Like, I've been, i he's invited me to studio sessions. Like, you know, it's, it's no, it's, it's no tea, but I love her. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's, it just makes me feel good, but I, I knew her before, you know, right. the, before she blew up. But how does that make you feel knowing that this person, mm -hmm. even though you, you may know her, because I knew Santana before too, mm -hmm. but knowing that this person who is of a higher stature now mm -hmm. didn't follow you before but now follows you now and is looking at you like it was it was like it was like wait because honestly she followed me after i had dropped the the tape mm -hmm. so it was like wait hold on i wonder if she low-key you know Listen seen to, it right. and you know it was like oh, let me follow her. let me see let me, let me get into her beach right. you know what i'm saying so i was like wait low let, let's get into it you know right. what i'm saying that made me feel good i did like girl what's yeah santana we waiting on you over here talk a lot tuesdays hello um so if you reach, if he reached out for a feature, mm -hmm. if he reached out, or even if just he just said, "I want you to come to the studio with me mm -hmm. and lay down a track just to see like what it sound like," would you be down? <laughs> Girl, I'm on the way. Like, girl, it's Santana text you right now. Girl, I gotta go. I'm sorry, girl. I gotta lay down this money. Not in the middle of my show. You won't be leaving. But no, if she asks for a feature, girl, I'm going. I'm on the way. That's good. I, I, I do. I think that a lot of people mimic mm -hmm. Santana. Yeah. But what I like about you and listening to your music, I don't feel like you have any of his sound. Yeah. And so I feel like you guys will do a good. Yeah. Be a good that's that's what I said too. Like she 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 not like. She get like she gives city girl, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like she she gives that vibe, and I feel like we would literally snap together, you know what I'm right. saying? Like with those two like setting off against each other, like we would snap. It, it's no undeniable, right? No, no issue. So now, last question about your rapping. Um, I saw you post post your stream mm -hmm. the other day on your page. Um, you had over eleven thousand streams in three weeks. Now, mind you, you only have four thousand something followers on Instagram. I know that's a big thing for you. Like, how does that make you feel? Honestly, like, like I can't thank people enough for just listening to my music. Like, 
that I feel like the the biggest part of me being scared to start rapping was the fact that I was scared that nobody was gonna listen to my music. I feel like you know nobody was gonna get into me. You know, did people because honestly, I used to talk like when people used to be in high school saying that they want to be rappers and they want to be you know actors. I'm like. Girl, that ain't gonna happen for you. That, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's not saying, like, that's not gonna happen for you. Right. Like that's not that's not gonna get like nobody. So to be the person that's now rapping, I didn't think nobody was gonna listen to my music. Right. So to literally log in to my motherfucking Spotify artist thing and see that that I had over eleven thousand monthly listeners, I almost shitted on my fucking self. Sure. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. play with me. And I think that's a good thing. I'm I'm actually very proud of you. Thank you. I know from your first mixtape to now, I can hear and see the growth. And just to have 11,000 people listening to you, that's big. Because most people that may have 40 something thousand followers online, don't, you know what I'm saying? On social media, don't even have that many listeners. You know what Honestly, I'm saying? Honestly, truly, that's, that's really being, that's being truthful. So I think that's, that's really, really big for you. Right. So now we're done with the interview session. We're going to get into some little fun. So. We're gonna, you know, take a break really quick. We're gonna come back and then we're gonna get into a few games. Okay, child. Okay. Woo. Okay, welcome back to Talk Live Tuesdays, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, so the next game that we're gonna play, well, we're gonna play a game. Mm -hmm. The first game we're gonna play is called Know That Song. Because mm -hmm. you're a rapper mm -hmm. and you should listen to a lot of music, hopefully. Oh my god. So I'm going to say the lyrics to the song. You finna embarrass me. And you have to finish the rest okay. and tell the artist who sings the song. Okay. If you don't know it, I'm gonna hold up my sign and you're gonna drink. Okay. Okay? Okay. I'll take off my glasses. Are you ready? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay, first song. You only have 10 seconds really after it. So, 10 seconds? Yeah. Okay. You can't take long and you have to finish the lyric too. Okay. So, one, mm -hmm. two, three. Boom. So, do you take me to be who I am, to have and to hold, to death do us part? I know so it's not, it's those best we work hard. Cause talking about the hoes of energy, it's just fine. It's not, I'm trying to tell them just then. Oh my God, I know this wow. song. Oh my God, wow. oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, that's Here I Am by Nicki Minaj. Yes. Oh my God, you got me fucked up. How, but I can't how do you not know the words? Okay, like, don't do that, 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 don't do that. Yes. Oh my God, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Okay, ready? Next song. <laughs> ready? Mm -hmm. See your best three, your nigga bless me. Right it around Atlanta in that X3, come check me. That's your main nigga, why he wanna address me? You sloppy seconds, hoe, please respect me, dirty hoe. <laughs> Girl, don't play with me. that song? B3, the big motherfucking three, bitch, that's by me. And J-Bay. <laughs> J-Bay, it's J-Bay. It's J-Bay, hey J-Bay. Okay, last song. Ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, you got a roommate, call me when there's no one there. Yeah, I know. Wait, I don't think that was enough. That was enough, because it's the easiest No, you got a roommate. No, you got a roommate. Call me when there's no one there. Put the key under the mat, and you know I'll be over there. Oh, yeah. my God. That's Drake, right? Wow. That's Drake, right? And that's supposed to be... Did he not say at the beginning of the interview that... Wait, okay. Young I don't feel like, no, 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 like, you playing. No, like, you no, playing. No, that's not You funny. read, you read, like, two words. Like, you no, gotta, you, you gotta, gotta get a roommate. Nah, 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 I even gave you the cadence nah, and the flow. No, you got a roommate. Call me when there's no one there. Put the key under the I don't like that. 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 That was the last one? That was the last one? We ain't got, we ain't got no, um, We ain't got no more. We ain't got no bonus round? No bonus round. You're dead. Next. So, give it, no, uh, 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 <laughs> we give you no more because you should have knew that. No, that's not fair. You are, call me, you are white. Call me when it, what? I got a room. Girl, I don't want to. No, uh, that's uh, what the song uh, said you should have uh, knew. Uh, uh, okay, so, of course, I made this game up on my own mm -hmm. because I know you are bar. Woo. And I feel like this should be something fun for you. Oh my God. So, this game is going to be called All Hail the Queen. Mm -hmm. Since you're a bar. Yeah. I, like I said, I thought this would be fun. You have 10 seconds to answer the questions I'm about to ask you about Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. If you get the answer wrong, you have to drink. Mm -hmm. We're going to test his bar skills, you guys. Okay, well, like, okay. We're testing okay. the bar skills. I Hello. feel like, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Ain't no feel like. Do you, do, do you, do your big Ready? one, Momo. Go ahead. Da, da, da. Okay, <laughs> number one. Nicki's birthday is December 4th, December 7th, or December 8th. 
<laughs> These are eight. I'm gonna, put you, I'm gonna put you right out of the door. The A. Uh, number two, Nikki has called herself all of these except Chun Li, Roman, Nikki the Barbie, Nikki the Ninja. She calls herself all of that. No, she doesn't. Nikki the Ninja, Nikki the Barbie, Nikki the How Did You Barbie? Like, no, like, she calls herself the Barbie. She never says Nikki the Barbie. No, Nikki the Ninja, Nikki the Barbie, Nikki the How Did You Barbie? Like, I'm a Barb. Don't play the lotto. Like, she says all of those. No. Yeah, I'm a bar. Pulling no. your bob card. No, pull. I'm pulling your bar no, card. No, bar. she said all of those. Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Nikki the Ninja, Nikki the Barbie, Nikki the Harajuku Ooh. Barbie. Like, don't play. She said I'm the pull. Harajuku Barbie. She no, Nikki I'm Barbie. Nikki the Ninja, Nikki the Barbie. Like, stop. No, Nikki no, no. the Harajuku Barbie. Like, stop playing. Yeah, see, she didn't say Nikki the Barbie. See, I knew she I did. Yeah. She did. She yeah. did. I'm pulling your bar card, baby. No. Don't, don't play with me. I'm a real bar. Give me the receipts. Girl. Send me the receipt. You better be lucky I got my motherfucking Next phone. Next question. Who customized her gold chair? Um. Uh, um. Oh! Three, two, oh! one. Run the <laughs> Drink. Oh my God. Drink. Oh who my God. Hey, Phil, who customized the gold chair? Uh, uh, uh. Lagerfeld, Carl Lagerfeld Damn, customized fuck. the gold chair. fuck, I know the song. Carl Lagerfeld customized fuck. the gold chair. Fuck. Okay. Next question. Juice is Nikki's producer. Okay. Keep me rolling, Juice. Keep me rolling, Juice. Hello. Period. And then the last question is, Nicki Minaj's baby name is her baby name. She hasn't said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I thought you don't were like, gonna, gonna be foolish. Girl, girl. Foolish question. excuse me. Answer, but you knew. I'm glad you knew. Okay. So now that we're done with the games, we're gonna put you in the hot seat. Okay. Oh in the hot seat. Yeah, turn around. Let's sit back. Sit back. Let's do this. So we're in the hot seat. Now we've come to the question. Okay. So these are gonna be, and I want you to really just say the first thing that comes to your mind. First, okay. First thing that okay. comes. First thing that comes to your mind. Okay. You ready? Don't judge me. First thing that comes to Don't your mind. Don't sue me. Okay. What's your thought on Donald Trump's color results? Fuck him. Oh. What are your thoughts on the stigma of gay men? <laughs> 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 Fuck Donald Trump. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so what are your thoughts on the stigma of gay men having to have certain appearance to be masculine? Wait, huh? What's my thought on What gay? is your thought on the appearance on gay men having to appear a certain way to be masculine? I mean, like, I don't I, you don't have a thought process? Like, what you mean? Like, I don't... Wait, I don't get that. I don't know. What are your thoughts on the stigma? Because, you know, they say, you can't dress like this and be masculine. I can you, do whatever the fuck I want to like do. You can't dress like this and be a boy. No, that, that's my thought process. I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. Excuse me? Hello. Next question. Do you think sex three times a day is too much? No. no. I need it five times a day. Oh, five. Well, you got me I was going to say, could you last three times a day? But you said five. So well, that answers that question. Next question. What is Uncle Clifford's rule 24.5? Don't cry in the pee. Uh, bitch! And that's my motherfucking I mama. Don't cry in the Don't cry in the pee. I literally thought you were not going to know that because a lot of people don't watch Don't cry in the pee. I was late to the pee. Don't cry in the pee. But I'm on time to the pee now. Don't cry in the pee. Don't cry in the pee. Well, pee. Because I thought that was like a trick question, but that's clearly not a trick question. So, are you dating? I'm not. Oh. Wait, wait, okay, well, like, what you mean, like, I mean, I, you know, I'm talking to people. I got my, I got my pieces over here, my pieces over here. I You know, I ain't dating. Period. So, if you could tell the young you something, what would it be? Girl, grow the fuck up. <laughs> as you should. As, as you should. Okay, so, now, outside of those things, I just want to ask you, you know, mm -hmm. what's coming up next for QB the Don? Um, I'm very much in. I'm on my promo season. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. this, this is the part of my. Hello, hello. This is the part of my promo season. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just doing videos, you know, interviews, just trying to get, just trying to get a, a, a little visual out there. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Get a grizzle a little bit. Could we, could we expect a visual soon? So, like, very much soon. Coming up. Okay. That's so, on like. Where do you see your career going? Like, if you could see yourself in the next five years, where do you see it going? Straight to the motherfucking top, bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm 
Don't play the lotto. <laughs> Straight to the top. I, but I, I think I do think. Mm -hmm. And even when I reached out to you yeah. before we did the interview, I told you that I think that if this album would have been like an album that he put out via, like if he was a bigger artist, I felt like this would have been his number one debut Billboard album because he did I say felt that. like it was it was just that good to me. Like, and to see 11,000 streams in three weeks from somebody that's up and coming, oh, imagine what he would have done if he would have been a big artist. So, Girl, City Girls. I, I do, oh, I do think that, that, you know, this was a big accomplishment for you. Thank you so much. Now, tonight, mm -hmm. tonight, I'm gonna have my first performance here on Talk Live Tuesdays with Tag. This is, a, this is a wholesale. You gave me this motherfucking Hennessy. You no. had me motherfucking drinking, and now you want me getting in front of this motherfucking mic and get this trying to rap. Yeah, like he didn't know. I this, was I already told no, this was a setup. No, this was a setup. He got the contract. This was a setup. He, he got all that before he got here. So he, he was this was a setup. This was a, this, uh -uh. So, this seemed like a scheme that tied setup. Uh -uh, don't play with me. Wow. <laughs> you know what? Okay, so now here at my show, like I said, before we go into you know your performance. Mm -hmm. Um. I just want to take you, want you to take a moment, mm -hmm. be serious, look into the camera, whichever one you want to look into, because we have several over here at Talk Live Tuesday. Um, I want you to encourage my audience. Like, <laughs> you know, you're not, it's people out here that are, like I said, and I said on most, almost every show, mm -hmm. it's people that want to be where we are or want to do what we do. Mm -hmm. So, and you're up and coming. Yeah. So what advice would you give to those people? I would say, number one, don't trust anybody. And I don't say that in like a negative way. I mean, like, I feel like people, everybody genuinely has their best interests at heart. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has their, best, their own best interests at heart. People will try to take advantage of you, especially like coming up. People will definitely try to take advantage of you, you know, like with prices, like with, with beats and shit like that. Like people will really try to take advantage right. of you. So don't trust anybody. Number two, don't take anything personally. I, like I said, everybody has their own best interests at heart. So it's just like, also have your own best interests at heart. So don't take anything personally. Just let people do them. You do you. Stay in your own lane. Job your own thing. And number three, finally, just be yourself. Be your motherfucking self. Like, at the end of the day, no one can be you. You know what I'm saying? It's only one you. So be your authentic self. So right. that's my top three. And that's good. I think that a lot of people miss that. And the reason I'm going to say that, and I know this is about you, mm -hmm. but I'm going to speak on that being yourself because I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing if I wasn't being myself. Right. Because prior to, and you know me, I wouldn't, I, I was scared to show my personality. I was scared to really be this person that I'm being now because I was scared of everybody that's gonna be watching this show to judge me. Right. So now that I'm being myself, I'm seeing people watching my show and people saying, seeing people say, hey, that's it for you. That's that's you. So I'm I'm glad you said that. And, that's that's the key point from if you take anything from him from, from tonight from, from tonight be, be yourself your motherfucking self be bitch. yourself and that's on my mom so before we go i want you to look into the camera and tell all my people where they can follow you so on instagram you can and that's the one that. So make sure you guys follow the more keys to be the dom on all social media platforms. And make sure y'all check it out because y'all already know I already told y'all I'm going to put y'all on the phone game. This is the this is the rapper. So I'm going to excuse you from the couch. Excuse me? I'm going to let you get ready mm. for your performance. Oh yeah, I forgot to set up. Yeah, so when you get ready for your, you go ahead and get ready for your performance. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, you know, Get into some things. Okay. So go ahead, get ready for your performance, and I'm gonna, you know, let me get my bag. Talk okay. to my people. Get your bag in. Yeah, head out. Hold on. Don't step me up with the damn The ghetto. Okay. You guys, I want to thank you guys for tuning in tonight to Talk Live Tuesday with Tag. Now, none other than QB the Don will be performing on Talk Live Tuesday with Tag. So get ready. Get your drink, get your music, get your, turn your TV up as loud as it can go. Cause guess what? You finna whistle while you flow, baby. So turn up, get ready. Thank you for tuning in to Talk Live Tuesdays with Tag. Boom. Turn me up in the booth a little bit. Uh, yeah. 
straight off the top, I'ma let you hoes know That I never been scared of a pussy ass hoe Huffing and puffing, but that bitch won't blow Ho, I'm known to hold a grudge, I ain't letting shit go Don't know your mama, don't call me no fucking bro Don't know your pappy, he probably a fucking hoe Dressing all black with a Fendi pouch Nigga ate me out on the couch, then I kicked him out Let me tell you about this weak ass bitch Silly little hoe, just wanna be in a mix on the low, lil' mama just want some dick Now she fucking after me to go and get it Seen a hoe lacking outside of the club Approach a little bitch and I ask her what's up I call a little Elsa cause the bitch froze up It get real different when a bitch in your mug Now back to the trap, I see what you really bout Put it on the Twitter finger, show me what you really bout Seen that hoe in person, she finna she took another round She don't wanna fight, I'm kicking ass and that's without a doubt And that nigga that you with right now I had them going down on me in this hometown Let me sit up straight and let your nigga fix my crown You could never Take my spot, you little silly ass clown. Nigga, cop in the field, I call it a pat down. Beating bitches on a fry, they calling the smack down. Hey, let's really pot and they watching the scene down. That nigga set us up, that's some shit's going down. Now, I'm on the low, I'm by my dog, I'm getting money, I want some more. Shaking ass, on the flow, he said he love me, it's time to go. He like the vibe that I'm giving off, but you fucking up the vibe, cause he get his off. I don't need the juice, baby, cause I got the sauce. I'm a first pick, bitch, you a Coin toss. What's good? What's, What's good? good? Yeah. Word. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Okay, well, I just want to say thank you, first of all, for coming out to my show today. Um, you took a time out of your busy schedule. You know, you're in town this weekend, so I just want to say thank you so much. Um, I have a little gift for you because I give all of my guests with a gift. So this is for you from Talk Alive Tuesdays with Tag. Um, I just want to say, like I said, thank you again for coming out. I hope you enjoyed the interview. I hope you enjoyed the show. It was very, you know, nothing but funny games, and I appreciate you so much. So, again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No problem, anytime. Well, you guys, I just want to say thank Thank you again for tuning in to Talk Live Tuesdays with Tad. You know I give it up. You know how I give it up. It ain't nothing but the best of the best of the best here on Talk Live Tuesday. Thank you again, you guys. Peace out.